Okay, in this video, we are gonna start doing assignment number six from my Calc CD class. Uh, it's gonna be double integrals over general regions. So instead of rectangles, uh, we're just gonna have some region in the xy plane. So let's take a look at these. Um, first up, we want the double integral of f of xy, which is x squared y over the region shown below. So one thing people freak out about is they don't know what f of xy looks like. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. The key thing here is you don't need to know. What you really need to know is the region that you're integrating over because that's where all of the work kind of takes place. So here we have a picture. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that x is definitely just going from zero to four for this region. Now x likes to go from left to right. So x has gone from zero to four. Y likes to go from bottom to top. So we're gonna go from this linear function that's going from zero two to four zero all the way up to y equals two. So I need to know the equation of this, but that's just two minus one half x. Okay, so y is gonna go from the bottom region, which is two minus one half x, up to the top of the region, which is y equals two. Uh, so our inequality for y is gonna be from two minus one half x up to two. With this in mind, we can set up our integrals. Um, the one that has constant, so zero to four, has to go last. So anything that depends on a variable has to go on an inner integral. Um, so let's set this up. So we're gonna go zero to four for x, and then we're gonna go from two minus one half x up to two for y. Our integrand is x squared times y dy dx. Now I know that this is a function of x times a function of y, so typically what I would do is split this. I can't do this here because y depends on x. Look at the bounds, right? So since y depends on x, I have to do the integral for y and then do the integral for x. But in this case, I'm just gonna let the calculator do the work because I really wanna show you what happens when we switch the bounds because what if you think a little differently? So I use a calculator, I got 192 over five. I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so what if your first instinct on this, which I think is a weird first instinct, but what if your first instinct is to think uh, y goes from zero to two? Well, I'm gonna need to invert the equation of that line. So y equals two minus one half x becomes negative two y minus two equals x. So I need that. I'm gonna say that y goes from zero to two. And now x likes to go from left to right. So it's gonna go from the line over to x equals four. So my bounds for x are going to be negative quantity two minus, nope, negative, quant negative two quantity y minus two, uh, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to four. Okay, so I set this up. Now this time x depends on y, so x has to be my innermost integral. And then y is all constant bound, so it has to be the last one. So we'll go zero to two. We'll go negative two quantity y minus two. Um, and then four. Our integrand is still just x squared y. And then this time we're going dx dy. I'm color coding, so it's like a little easier to see. Uh, but I use a calculator on this as well. This is where a calculator really comes in handy is when you're trying to like figure out do I know what I'm doing? Because the calculator will just like crank out the answer and you don't have to worry about going through the steps. I'm gonna do them by hand later in this video, I think. Uh, but for now, it's a really good idea if you can like figure out what's going on and the calculator can let you do that. So don't be afraid to use your calculator. All right, next up. Double integral of f of x, y equals x squared, y. So same thing um, over the region shown. So it's a slightly different region this time. Same idea though. I look at this and I think x goes um, from zero to four. I need the equation of this line, which in this case is just y equals one half x. Um, x will go from zero to four. That's from left to right. Y likes to go from bo bottom to top, right? So uh, as you like move around the region, the bottom curve is one half x and then the top is two. So my y bounds are gonna be one half x to two. So we can set up our integral, right? X is going from zero to four. Y is going from one half x to two. The integrand is x squared y, and then we are gonna do dy dx. So the one that depends on the other has to go first. So the y bounds depend on x, so y has to go before x. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up with x's left at the end, and what would you do with that? Uh, all right, so I use the calculator again. I got 256 over 15. I'm gonna do it again where I swap the bounds, right? So if my first instinct is to think what, x, what y is doing, y is going from zero to two, now I have to invert, right? So y equals one half x becomes x equals two y. So for y, I'm going from zero to two. For x, I'm going from left to right, which means I'm going from x equals zero to x equals two y. That's the key is just remember that 
Y likes to go from bottom to top. X likes to go from left to right. Look at the region. Just like imagine you're like, a, I don't know, you like let a dog in there and it's just going to run from edge to edge to edge to edge. Like left edge, right edge, bottom edge, top edge. Like what are they? Okay, so now we set it up. So the outermost integral will be our constant. The innermost integral will be the one that depends on something else. So 0 to 2y. Our integrand is x squared y. In this case, uh, x depends on y, so we're going to go dx dy. I use a calculator again, and I got the same answer again. So that's how we basically do this. Um, this one's a little different. Well, it's not different. We can still do it the same way. But there's like a better choice and a worse choice. The reason that this is a better choice versus a worse choice type of situation is a vertical line passing through this region will at first hit kind of the slanted line on the top, and then it'll hit the horizontal line on the top, right? So from x equals 0 to 2, the top curve is a linear function that has a slope. Like it's y equals x. On the interval from 2 to 4, the top curve is just y equals 2. It changes. So a vertical line changes. This is not a vertically simple region. A horizontal line, the top and bottom will always be y equals 0 and y equals 2. The left and right will always be y equals x and x equals 4. So it actually makes sense to do this one dx dy, to do x first and then y. Let's set that up. So uh, y is going to go from here. That's 0 to 2. Simultaneously, we know that this is y equals x or x equals y. We want to go from left to right. So x goes from y, which is on the left, to 4, which is on the right. We can set up our integral, 0 to 2, y to 4, x squared y. And then this will be dx dy, because x depends on y. It has to go first. So dx dy. Uh, use a calculator. I got 608 over 15. Now, some people hate doing dx dy. I don't know. It doesn't bother me at all. I would prefer to do dy dx for absolutely no reason. Um, but I'm willing to do dx dy, like no problem. Uh, if you don't like it, you can actually do this problem. So let's let's take a look at it. We have to split the region. We're going to split it into two, which means we have to do two double integrals, which if you're doing it by hand is unambiguously worse. Um, all right, so on the first region, we go from 0 to 2 for x. Now y is going to go from 0 up to x. So that'll be one integral. On our second region, we go from 2 to 4. And then y is going to go just from 0 to 2. So we have to set up two double integrals, do both of them, and then uh, we will just add the answers together. So here are our two integrals, 0 to 2, 0 to x, x squared y, dx dy, plus 2 to 4, 0 to 2, x squared y, dx dy. Don't be afraid to use a calculator. There are lots of online calculators, um, whatever. Like It's a great way to learn. I know that in a college level class, you're probably not going to be allowed to use one on an exam. But a lot of learning can take place and can save you a ton of time. So I just had the calculator add those up. And again, I got 608 over 15. So I'm definitely doing it right. And I, I know that because the calculator is kind of spitting out answers. Uh, let's take a look. I'm going to do two more in this video, I think. So f of x, y is x plus y plus 1 to the negative second. Now, I have no idea what that looks like, but that's not an issue for me because I don't need to know what that looks like. What I need to know is the the uh, region I'm integrating over, which is the triangle from 0, 0 to 4, 0 to 0, 8. Let's draw that. So here we go. All right, so I can see I would most be comfortable uh, doing dy dx because that's my preference, and this is a vertically simple region, a vertical line passing through the region always has the same uh, bottom and top curves, so we can do it. Uh, we need the equation of this, which is, I usually just use slope-intercept form on these, so 8 minus 2x, like you're going down 8 and over 4, so negative 2 is your slope. Uh, so x is going to go from 0 to 4. y is going to go from bottom to top, right? So that's going to be from 0 to 8 minus 2x. So we can set up our integral. So it's going to be 0 to 4. 0 to 8 minus 2x, which means we have to do dy dx because y depends on x. If we do dx dy, it's weird, and we're going to end up with like x's at the end, and we don't want that. We want a finite value. So our integrand, which is the quantity x plus y plus 1 to the negative second dy dx. Okay, so now we need to think about how we're doing this. Well, because uh, I'm doing this one by hand. So 0 to 4 is going to stay. We're literally just doing the inner integral. I need to find an antiderivative of the quantity x plus y plus 1 to the negative second, dy, where y is the variable, right? So in that case, uh, 
you know, I'm just thinking it's basically u to the negative second, and there's no chain rule situation, so I'm going to get negative u, which is x plus y plus 1, to the negative first. So plus 1 times the reciprocal. Now, when you do these types of integrals, what you want to do is you want to stipulate what the bounds are, right? So we integrate with respect to y, so the things we're subbing in for are y values. So I'm going to say y is equal to 0, y is equal to 8 minus 2x. If you do that, you will make fewer mistakes. So you want to, on the inner integral, identify what you're subbing in for, because there's still two variables, right? And if you don't do that, you might get confused, and then dx is still at the end. All right, we're going to fundamental theorem this. So every y first becomes 8 minus 2x, and then minus every y becomes 0. So do I want to write? I don't know. It looks like this. We go 0 to 4. We have negative x plus that y becomes 8 minus 2x plus 1 to the negative first. Minus, now we plug in 0 for y, so we get negative quantity x plus 0 plus 1, so x plus 1 to the negative first dx. Now we have to just do both of these integrals. Um, so you can like clean up the one, you get uh, 9 minus x in there. You have like negative quantity 9 minus x to the negative first. When you integrate that, because of the chain rule, you lose the negative. Like you should write that one down. I didn't. Uh, so I'm going to get natural log absolute value of 9 minus x uh, plus the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1. And we're going from 0 to 4. So you might want to show an extra step on that one. I didn't. Uh, I think you can probably avoid it, but it's up to you. Right? But keep in mind, both of those are really just like 1 over u situations. Um, and then the question is, is it just du or is it negative du? Uh, all right, so when we plug in 4, we're going to get uh, the natural log of 5 plus the natural log of 5. And then when we plug in 0, we get the natural log of 9. And then you also get the natural log of 1, but that's 0. So we end up with this. Uh, this, by properties of logs, is natural log of 5 plus natural log of 5 is natural log of uh, 25, right? Because addition between becomes multiplication within. So natural log of 25 minus natural log of 9, and then subtraction between becomes division within. So finally, we get natural log of 25 over 9. I then just put it into the calculator because why wonder, right? Like, check your answers. I get two natural log of 5 thirds, but coefficients can become exponents. So that's the natural log of the quantity 5 thirds squared, which is 25 over 9. All right, I'm gonna do one more in this video. So here goes. Number 20, f of xy is cosine of 2x plus y. Uh, x is going from 1 half to pi over 2, and y is going from 1 to 2x, which means y has to go first because y depends on x. I don't really need to do anything to set this one up because we're just like expressly given what we need. So we're going to do this. Uh, 1 half to pi over 2, 1 to 2x, cosine of 2x plus y dy, and then dx. dy has to go first because the y bounds depend on x. If the x bounds depend on y, then x has to go first. That's how you decide which one's going first. All right, so we're just going to integrate, right? So uh, cosine of 2x plus y dy. So y is the variable. So 2x might as well just be like pi. Like it doesn't really matter in this case. The integral of cosine of something is a uh, sine of that thing. So we're going to get the integral from uh, 1 half to pi over 2, still there. And then we'll have sine of 2x plus y. And then our y bounds are from 1 to 2x. And then there's still a dx. All right, so we use a fundamental theorem. But we're doing it like within an integral, which is where these are kind of neat. You just If you're neat and organized, you will be totally fine with these. So we're going to get the sine of, we're plugging in for y. So you get 2x plus 2x, which is 4x. And then you get minus the sine of 2x plus 1, because we're plugging in 1 for that y value, dx. Now we just have to integrate these. The integral of sine of 4x is going to be negative 1 fourth cosine of 4x. Being good at antiderivatives is a huge benefit when you're doing double integrals. I mean, I feel like that should be obvious, but who knows? It's worth it. Like, don't be embarrassed. Go back and get better if you're not really great at these. It pays off in the long run. Uh, the integral of negative sine of 2x plus 1 is going to be positive one-half cosine of 2x plus 1. And then here, it's like technically x goes from one-half to x. x goes, uh, no, technically it is <laughs> from x equals one-half to x equals pi over 2. We don't have to write it because it's the only variable, right? So that's the difference between the inner integral and the outer integral when you're evaluating them. The last integral you do is basically a calc 1 integral. So it comes down to how good you were at calc 1. I'm just going to like plug this stuff in. 
Uh, so we'll get negative one fourth uh, cosine. Sorry, we get the negative negative one fourth cosine of two pi. Cosine of two pi is one, so that's negative one fourth. Then minus negative one fourth. What am I doing? I'm plugging in pi over two to both of them, right? So I get negative one fourth cosine of two pi plus what? Plus what? Uh, plus one half cosine of pi plus one. That's all from plugging in pi over two. I don't know why I struggled over that. Minus, we're going to plug in one half. So when we plug in one half, we get uh, negative one fourth cosine of two plus one half cosine of two. Whew. Okay, we could clean this up. It's not going to really look that much better. Um, so I just ran it through the calculator to make sure that we did it right. And there you go. All right, I'm going to end this one here. I'll be back in the next one to kind of finish up this assignment. Uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.